so we're talking about memory and chronic pain. And as, as we all know, chronic pain is not just pain. It affects much, much more. And um, it affects, it's a mind body problem and it can affect your mind in many different ways. And one of the commonest complaints of people who have chronic pain is in fact, the way that the, so you get a pain brain, which is fuzzy thinking can't, and you can't remember stuff and you just feel like you're, as they say, not the full quid. And, and it is, it is uh, uh, and part of that is the, the loss of your sharp memory of, of, of being able to recall stuff. So um, the, a big part of that is that the, um, we live in such a, a demanding society, you know, the, 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 there are, we're bombarded constantly by information. We're in the information age, which is um, a, absolutely a double-edged sword. It, uh, on the one hand, gives us lots of information, and on, on the other hand, kind of buries us in information, misinformation, disinfo dismisinformation, um, uh, fake news, bullshit, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we're we're bombarded constantly by the stuff, the expectations because of, of 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 platforms like Facebook, where people only show what lovely times they're having, and uh, so you have unrealistic expectations of the way life should be. And all of this adds in and creates stress. And stress, chronic pain, is one of the ultimate stresses. And when you, uh, our, our body has this kind of uncanny uh, ability to respond to stress. And so what our mind does is, is when you're living in a stress mode, your mind will do two things. The one is it will respond, your mind and your body will respond to an immediate obvious stress. Somebody's running at you with a great big stick and they're going to attack you, poof, you will respond. But much more common and much more profound because that doesn't happen that often, thank God, is that your mind will respond to a potential threat. And responding to something which could be a threat is in fact the way that as human beings, we uh, rose to the top of the heap. The, it's, a, it's, a, um, it's an ecological advantage to be able to pick out stressful situations and make choices so that you don't get eaten or run over or damaged. And so when our mind, we're already in a stressful situation because we're living with chronic pain. And now added to that, our mind perceives other potential threats. What happens is that your mind turns on a process, process which is the fight and flight response. And the fight and flight response is your upper brain, your frontal lobes and, and uh, the parts that make us human, talk to our lizard brain. And the lizard brain is deeper inside, which is the midbrain, the thalamus. And the thalamus is where pain lives. Right next to it is the limbic system where emotion lives. So now you've wound all this stuff up and they talk and it, it takes much less time than I'm taking to tell you. They talk to the hypothalamus, hypo under. So this area that sits just under the thalamus, which produces a releasing factor, goes down to the pituitary. And the pituitary is like this little teardrop at the bottom of your brain. The pituitary fires up and it sends a message via a, a substance called ACTH, adrenocorticotrophic uh, factor. Trophic means turning on. 
So this goes in as long as it takes for the blood to go from your pituitary down to both of the adrenal glands that are sitting just above your kidneys, it's basically a second, whoosh, they turn on and they pump out adrenaline and, and cortisol. And what adrenaline does is it hypes you up. So your heart rate increases, your blood pressure goes up, your mouth goes dry, your pupils dilate, your bowel slows down or can speed up, can be one of those, and all your muscles are tense and ready to go, uh, which is great if you're being attacked, but if it is a potential threat and that potential threat is always there, it's utterly, completely exhausting. The other thing is cortisol. Now, what cortisol does is it increases blood sugar in your system so that you've got more to utilize. And inside your brain, in particular areas, there are lots of receptors for cortisol. So the cortisol goes whooshing through your system, reaches those areas in your brain. And where it reaches is two areas in particular. The first is your frontal cortex where you live. I mean, that's you, that's your personality, those are your higher thoughts, those are what make you human and make you you. And quite a lot of your memories. And it reaches another area which is called your hippocampus. And your hippocampus is two little curved areas deeper in your brain where you fix memories. So you make memories all over the place, but the areas where they get fixed in your brain are your hippocampi, hippocampuses. I think it's hippocampi. So, so cortisol, bang, at the, the receptors on these two structures, the cortisol attaches to them and it does its thing. Now, there was a guy by, who's got a grand name by the name of Vanya Apkarian, who did the study in 2012, where what he did was he took MRIs of a whole lot of people, the one group, which is the control group of people who didn't have chronic pain, the group who had chronic pain, and he measured the volume of the hippocampus. And what he found was actually profound and quite surprising, almost shocking, that people in chronic pain, their hippocampus was significantly smaller than people not in chronic pain. And it turns out that cortisol is toxic. Excess amounts of cortisol are toxic to the hippocampus. And so the hippocampus the cells, and then they went on and did studies on mice who didn't only have their brain scanned, but actually ended up dying and their, their hippocampus um, being uh, dissected. And I have a picture here, which I'll share with you. This is, this is a, these are two pictures of the um, little a nerve cell in a hippocampus. In, on the left, if you can see, you can see all these branches. And on the right is a hippocampus from a mouse that has been bombarded with cortisol. So they must have done horrible, uh, scary, uh, stressful things to the mouse. And you can see that a number of these have, have shrunk down. Um, and this was a generalized finding. I mean, this, is, this was their best picture. So what you have is that living with chronic stress and living with the chronic stress of pain, you end up, this ends up affecting your ability to fix memories. And, and it's not like you're being told something you don't know. <laughs> you say, aha, so that's actually why. Now, the thing is, it doesn't hit every type of memory. It only affects certain types of memories. You have basically 
three kinds, three subdivisions of your memory. The first is called implicit or procedural. And this kind of memory is, it's the stuff that we just do. It's just so easy. You, you, once you've learned it, you can always do it. You can always do up your shoelaces. You can always make toast. You can remember how to make coffee. You can drive a car, ride a bike and so on. And these things, these parts, these are the procedures that we do in our life to get along. And these memories, they can sometimes be hard won in the beginning, but once they're there, they're there. And if you have chronic pain, you don't lose them. They, they're kind of bedded down deep. So that's procedural memory. Then there's the second kind of memory, which is declarative or explicit. And what these, this memory is, is this, it is hard won, but it kind of just hangs around, sort of stuff that you would learn for an exam. And then if somebody uh, asked you uh, a month or six weeks later, you'd say, mm, oh yeah, you have to really scrape around. Or some, and for some people, it's people's names. So people's names would be a, a, an implicit thing for some people who just goes in and sticks. And for others, it's just, you, you can, you, so you have to scrabble around for people's names. So, so you have the second kind of memory and this, the memory that is, that is not bedded down, that becomes significantly affected by stress and by chronic pain. And the third kind of memory, which is working memory, which turns out to be unbelievably important. So working memory is that you are doing a task and then suddenly something pops into your head and you think, oh my God, that's right. I've got to go next door to pick up something to do something. And then you go next door and you think, why am I here? <laughs> I don't know if that happens to you, but it happens to me. So that kind of memory, that's your working memory. It's just kind of stuck around in, in, in a in a random access mem you know the, the ram place in your brain and if it if it that part of the memory is significantly impaired so you find yourself keeping on forgetting you think oh it's going to do something ah uh, and it's poof it's gone so the explicit or declarative memory the memory that's sort of there but uh, you have to dig for it, and the memory that you need just to do your day-to-day -to -day tasks properly, that memory is significantly impaired in, um, with chronic pain. And <clears throat> part of the reason for that is that your brain will, uh, it, it has only a certain amount of energy capacity. And so, in coping with the stress of, of pain and the potential stresses of everything around, because once you're stressed, then your lights are on, all the lights are on and you're constantly searching for things that could make it worse. Your brain has the capacity to deal with that. So it will drag up very vividly memories that have to do with your pain situation and have to do with whatever's needed to cope with the potential threats that are coming. And it hasn't got energy for other stuff. And the other stuff, which is so important that you need from, for day-to-day -day living and to remember stuff, it, uh, it's all too much. So it just lets it go. Uh, okay, so that's fundamentally what happens with chronic pain and memory.